Charterman, 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 What do you say? You want my car voice, bro? Hey, what's up, you guys? Shardimus Prime here, doing another Marvel Legends action figure review on the Marvel Legends Avengers Infinity War movie two pack Iron Man Mark 50, Iron Man, and the Iron Spider. Try to pick these up, you can do so. Big, big, big. Get your big, badass toys at bigbadtoystore.com. Click the link in the description below. I actually, picked these up at San Diego Comic Con, and I'm pretty stoked to have them. Looking pretty sweet already. Anyway, on the side, you can see Iron Man right over there. And then on this side, you can see a nice image of the movie poster from Infinity War. <laughs> Sorry to use my creepy voice, but a little detail I didn't realize till later on is that this poster image is not the official poster image as a masked Iron Man, and it is missing the Iron Spider. I thought that was pretty interesting. Then there's a the read-up over here on the Iron Spider. If you want to read it, go ahead and pause it right now. Then here's a read-up on the Mark 50 Iron Man. If you want to read it, go ahead and pause it right now. And then on this side, you can see the Iron Spider, and then on the top, we get a spot varnished Marvel symbol or logo right there. And then not much more at the bottom, so let's get to it and crack this thing open. And here's the Mark 50 Iron Man and the Iron Spider out of the pack. Packaging and yeah, we've seen these body molds retooled and reused for this set over here But we get a lot of new accessories, so that's a very cool part of this uh, Let's first take a closer look at the iron spider and then we'll get a closer look at the mark 50 iron man So I'm not really counting the Waldos as an accessory But we do get this interchangeable head sculpt with the Tom Holland head right over here, uh, which looks okay I mean, it's not really looking too great to be honest with you. I don't know I don't feel like it really captures the likeness of Tom Holland perfectly at all Kind of does, like on the side a little bit more so. I think the sculpt for the hair, you know, actually looks pretty good and everything. But yeah, uh, I don't know. I just feel like it just doesn't really look like him all the way. It's just a little off and I can't pinpoint exactly how. I don't know. For some reason, I'm liking the head sculpt right here on the far, on the Homecoming version, not the Far From Home Homecoming, a little bit more. So I don't know. Let me know what you think in the comment section. But it's definitely better uh, than the Mayfex Parker head sculpt that we just recently saw. So yeah, at least it's better than that one. And then we get the new masked Spidey head sculpt right here, which actually is an improvement compared to the original version. As you can see, this has more of a gloss that matches the rest of the figure, where this one was very matted, and then the rest of the figure looked very glossy. So I do like that. Makes the sculpt just pop a little bit more, makes the figure look a little bit cooler. So, you know, everything else on the figure is pretty much the same. Uh, the hands are back to glossy instead of matted, and of course we get uh, the bracelets right over here, or the web shooters, or these gauntlets, I don't know exactly what to call them, you know what I mean? But yeah, they look pretty good. I like that they've added these, so I like that. That's pretty sweet, and you could remove that if you want. You can see that they rotate a little bit. But everything else is pretty much the same on this figure. You know, all the paint apps and everything are very similar, aside from the hands and the head. You can see the similarities from a little farther away right here. So, yeah, not too many differences. But uh, we do get the added Waldos, which look pretty good. Not film accurate, but they look pretty good as far as the sculpts go. So, you know, can't really complain about that too much. Looks pretty good, you know. So I like that. I'm not going to go over the articulation of this figure, but I will talk about the rotation right over here at the base of these. And you can pop these out if you want to. There you go. Yeah, so you can pop those out, and they do port right back in. Uh, this whole back piece right here, I have not been able to remove that whole thing. So if you want to add that to like a superior Spider-Man figure or something, you know, uh, I don't really know if you can do that. But anyway, uh, yeah, you get side-to-side -side movement right here, and they hinge up and down. And then you get side-to-side -side movement right here, and that hinges up and down. And then you get the same articulation up here, hinges back and forth, and then no articulation right up here. And I think the sculpts look pretty good. And again, this is not film accurate. The Mafex one is it's definitely a lot more film accurate as you can see it has the blue added to it but I do like the sculpt right here uh, they did come a little warped or a couple of these pieces came a little warped as you can see right here but I just needed to heat it up with a hairdryer and then you know straighten it out and put it under some cold water and it came out just fine but yeah I like how these look they do look pretty cool just not film accurate you know after all this time still not film accurate yeah, damn it. so my biggest gripe with this figure is just the way the head sculpt came out uh, there's a lot of paint around the eyes over here that is just kind of bothering me you know, that extra teal color just bleeding out from underneath there. And then the faceplate area is not really properly placed on the figure. You know, there's a little bit of a gap right there. And these parts look like they're sticking outside of the faceplate or the rest of the helmet anyway, like comparing it to the original version, you know. So you can see the gapage comparison right there. 
So yeah, a little irritating. And then same thing with the blue paint. You know, I think the eyes came out way better on this first version from Hasbro compared to this one right over here. So that's a bit frustrating. I've seen multiple copies of this, and it's like that on a lot of them. Uh, you can see some nice gunmetal gray right over here, and the paint apps are applied just the same exact way as they were on this version right here. We're, we're just getting a much better red color throughout that I like very much. You can still see through it a little bit, you know, so it's a little translucent, but not too bad. I do like it. I'm not going to go over the articulation on this figure because I've reviewed it twice already uh, but one thing I will say is that I did heat this up to get the shoulders to move in all the way but in doing that you could see that I've ruined some paint right over here in the armpits which is uh, a minor cost for being able to do that so I'm happy I'm able to get the arms uh, moving straight forward but yeah you're gonna scuff up your figure a little bit so that's a little unfortunate the red looks pretty good on the arms right here especially with the gold you know uh, the gold just really goes very well with this and the light blue color looks really good so I'm very happy with that and it's just similarly applied as it was on this first version so yeah the other paint apps are the same well I mean it's all the paint apps are the same I guess technically the paint of the plastic is the only thing that's really different here but you can see right here in all these seams we get that gunmetal gray again looking pretty cool with the little touches of blue then there's Iron Man butt, and then here's looking at the back, and up, oh, yep, we got a little paint splotch on there. So it's a little unfortunate there's that peg right there in the back. Uh, we did not have that peg in the back of this version, so yeah, they went and drilled that in there. And here's looking at the legs, looking pretty clean. So yeah, not too bad. Uh, I do like how this red looks. It's really what it's all about, aside from the accessories with this figure, is how the red came out. And then there's the peg holes right there. And the Mark 50 Iron Man comes with all these accessories right over here, which are pretty sweet. Now we did get the fisted hands and repulsor blasting hands along with these blast effects right over here before. Uh, but we get the added nano blasters right there. That's what I'm calling them. And then we get these nano hovering blasters, I guess. I don't know what else to call them. And then we get this shield right over here, which is actually sculpted out pretty well. But after finding some images of the shield online, line it is a bit inaccurate it is missing some blue paint so there should be some blue paint on here like at least up here and around there which I guess could be customizable so at least the sculpt looks pretty good though so I like that and you get this clip which I wish could rotate but it does not rotate at all and it fits onto the forearm of Iron Man okay you know it, I like to just go through up there it's a little bit easier to do without having the hand there of course but yeah so it does stay on there pretty well so that's pretty cool and then you get these guys right over here which look great I really like them a lot so you want to make it so that this part is underneath right there. If they added some blue paint on the inside right here, that would have been pretty cool. But I do like that we have some gunmetal gray up top and some gold throughout. Or just gold, you know, it's kind of just parceled out right over here and over here. So that's not too bad. And then this is very identical to the other side. So, you know, they are fairly the same. Uh, you can go ahead and port this on. Uh, you want to play a little bit of match the shape right here on this end. So you're going to make sure that uh, it's going to match the forearm a bit like there so that there that goes Oop, got it upside down and there it goes like that so you want this on the underside and then you can take a hand and go ahead and port it in right like so like that so that's pretty neat and then if you want to take another step further you can take the repuls the repulsor uh, effect and put that into the hand which is kind of a tight fit there's a lot of stuff going on right here I do find myself having to move the hand all the way to one side or the other for this to really work out you know it's a little cramped in there as far as space goes so if you go like that you can do something or yeah see so there that goes you can make that work but I do like to remove the hand and just shove that in there and I don't know it's a little tricky to do but sometimes I think it looks a little cooler like this I don't know let me know what you guys think in the comment section below then we get the last effect piece right over here that they use this brilliant very light colored translucent plastic that has a glossy effect to it or a glossy finish to it and that's what you really need to make this disappear I mean look how easy it disappears as I turn up the exposure on my camera, you know what I mean? It just goes away, so that is really awesome. Now you can still kind of see stuff behind it, but I think that is great. I love this gunmetal color that we're seeing right here on these guys. So that is very cool. And I gotta say the red throughout on this figure is just awesome to see, you know, just a much more film accurate color red throughout on the figure. And if you want to remove these, you can do that. So if you want to do some stop motion, I won't be doing that today. Nope, I don't have time right now. But yeah, if you wanted to make something happen with stop motion, that'll work. So that's pretty cool. And then just to show where it ports onto the back of the figure, you know, you have a peg and it just goes right in like that. 
And bam, that doesn't really look too bad at all. I like that. It's pretty awesome. Again, when you turn the exposure up, when you're taking pictures, those things really disappear. It doesn't have to be that high, but still, that looks really good. I love that. Now, from the back, though, it doesn't work out nearly as well. Even if you turn the exposure all the way up, you're going to see that plastic a lot easier. That plastic is going to stand out a lot more. And to measure out these two figures, you can see that the Iron Spider is standing right under the 6-inch mark, and Iron Man standing just a little over 6.5 inches. And then here's the new Mark 50 Iron Man and new Iron Spider next to the first releases of these figures and you could see the drastic improvement right over here I mean especially with the Iron Man figures uh, I'm so much happier with the way this looks compared to that one right there And it is great having the Waldos and then for another comparison We have the SH Figure Arts Mark 50 Iron Man and then we have the SH Figure Arts Iron Spider And yeah, I mean definitely the Marvel Legends Iron Spider looks better than the SH Figure Arts But I do like this SH Figure Arts Iron Man I mean just looking at that red right over there that does look way cooler than this even though this is an improvement from the previous version and to get that SH H figure arts out of there and put the Mafex in place right there because this is so much better. I still think this is the best Iron Spider figure uh, for six inch scale anyway at least. Uh, actually it is my favorite Iron Spider figure overall. Tricky to stand. Bit of a wobbly figure but yeah I got it. <laughs> but anyway yeah this is my favorite Iron Spider figure. And then to compare a couple other Marvel Legends Spider-Man figures we have the Far From Home version and the Homecoming version. And then here's the two figures next to your average six inch scale figure. We have the Marvel Legends Big Time Letdown Spider-Man and no stop motion today as I am currently at the Mexico City unboxing toy convention. This is a pre-recorded video, but I've had to stockpile my reviews, so the stop motion will come back. Be patient, it will return. So I really like this two-pack set, but I really wish it came in a lot earlier than it did. I don't know, I'm almost feeling like I wish Hasbro could take their time and wait a little bit on the figures until they get more information, until they give us, you know, the first batch. Maybe they could just give us one batch and make us wait a little bit longer. I don't know, but a lot of people may get upset over that. I'm not sure. Let me know what you think of that idea in the comment section below. But anyway, these are both dope looking pieces. Uh, my biggest gripe really is the price point. I paid 60 bucks for these two and for them being re-released figures. And the Iron Man does have a ton of accessories and the Iron Spider definitely has the added Waldos to him and everything. So I am getting more stuff, but I think this is around the same price I paid for my Juggernaut Colossus 2-pack, which is not going to be in the mail till after I get back from Mexico. So I think I just paid 10 bucks more for that. So it's like for $10 extra getting a Juggernaut and Colossus compared to these two. I don't know, at that price point I'm giving this a sun rating of it's not so bad. Because as cool as I think these are, they just came in a little bit late and I just think it's kind of a high price point. Really, I think around the $45, $50 range would have been a little bit more appropriate. I don't know. It's not a huge price difference right there, but still, I just feel like 60 bucks is kind of a lot for this, but at the same time, I really like how they came out even though that we still get inaccurate Waldos on the Iron Spider. So yeah, there that is. But anyway, I'd like to know what you guys think, so let me know in the comment section below. Hit the like button if you like this video and don't forget to hit the subscribe button as well as the notification bell if you have not already and a big thanks to all these people over here that support this YouTube channel I sincerely appreciate it you guys you guys help make this channel keep on rolling and if you want to see the latest in Marvel news be sure to check out marvelousnews.com and don't forget to follow me over on the Instagram Twitter Twitch and Stardust links to everything I talked about in the description below and I'll catch you guys later peace Sharpness Prime videos. Hey, you should click one. Yeah, click on one of them. Or subscribe if you haven't.